This channel is about enjoying your project in the shop and on the road, wearing it out and doing it all over again. Sometimes that happens quick, while other projects take years. And years, and years, and years. Today we're introducing the Bug Project, affectionately named Dweezil by a college friend back in the mid-90s. Yup, that's how long this thing has been around and it still isn't on the road. There has been a little progress, but life has provided some good and some not so good interruptions that have kept this dream as nothing more than that, a dream. Really, the car wasn't worth buying in the first place, but it's mine and has been for over two decades, so I'm sticking with it. You're invited to come along as Dweezil is finally put back on the road again, so let's take a brief look at the car's colorful history. Dweezil was purchased for $300 in 1995 from a pool of VWs that had been hastily modified for off-roading. We got it to run that day and drove it 70 miles home. Only broke down once. This wouldn't be the last time one of my vehicles broke down the day it was purchased, so remind me to tell you about the RV purchase or even the 68 double cab someday. Work was done on the car over the next few years, but the project didn't really get anywhere. After my college graduation in 1998, the car was returned to the backyard I bought it from until 2004 when I had a place to keep it. Retrieving the car with a little utility trailer was a 500 mile adventure that involved an alligator, a blown tire, and a top speed of 45 miles an hour. Be sure to check out the Haptic Garage website for the full story. As the disparity between my goals for the car and its condition widened, it became obvious how much work would be required to drive this thing reliably someday. I didn't have the skills necessary to complete the project, so I started learning how to weld and fabricate and breathe life back into old forgotten stuff. Of all the things some experience in a shop make possible, a willingness to try is the greatest mechanical advantage. So I moved not so cautiously forward and took the body off. Then the body had to go back on so the vehicle could be registered at the DMV. The engine had seen better days and while attempting to set its timing, it was realized that the distributor was installed backwards. No problem, all the wires were installed backwards too and it ran. Good enough for some, but not the way I'd do it. The body came back off, this time with the help of a homemade body removal dolly. That's not really a formal thing, it's just a haptic garage solution to a haptic garage problem. Next, the engine didn't want to leave the car, even with all the mounting bolts removed. It turned out that the clutch disc was seized on the input shaft. That means big trouble. Solvable with a little luck in removing the clutch plate bolts through the starter hole. Disassembling the engine revealed many terminal issues, including a broken piston. The next diagnosis involved a bent front suspension, followed by a lot of wasted time trying to save body parts that were not savable. I had put in a lot of time and had not gotten far, except that I had a blast doing it all and learned a lot. It was time well spent. In 2015, things started picking up. The heater channels and floor pans were replaced with the best reproduction parts available. As part of that project, the entire front third of the car was cut off and replaced with the front of a 69 donor beetle. The next step was to build an engine, which I opted to do with a bunch of worn out swap meet parts just to see if I could. It's the grenade engine because it could blow at any time, but it kind of runs and should be enough to test the steering and brakes when we get there. Parts have been set aside for a decent engine build and you gotta know I'm looking forward to that too. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video about anything we've covered, but this is where the vlog begins. We're gonna build it and go, so subscribe now and we'll get started by having a little bit of fun. I'm resurrecting an old project today. Uh, this beetle has been sitting uh, off and on, mostly off, for over 20 years now, and I'm really getting tired of seeing it sit there unusable. I'm just gonna see if I can get it fired up, maybe do a lap or two around the yard. Uh, and then park it for disassembly and I'll spread it out over the floor of this garage, get everything cleaned up and, and put back together. So kind of a fun thing here, uh, gonna see if we can crank this thing up and move a few inches.
stupid silly fun <laughs> now I'm like all about doing this for real uh, getting this thing on the road and, and getting to experience this more than just five minutes in the yard making my neighbors think I'm crazy <laughs> so a uh, long way to go to get there but my my plan is to get the chassis done and so I'm just going to focus on that, going to lean into it hard and uh, get that done and go from there. Uh, but right now I'm feeling pretty enthused about the project, which I'm going to need because it's going to be pretty intense. So uh, here we go. <laughs> Let's get this thing spread out across the garage and cleaned up. Thanks for watching this introduction to the Haptic Garage Weasel Vlog Series. It seems like this project is finally gaining momentum, so subscribe now to see if Dweezil survives long enough to make it back on the road. Maybe you have a similar project? Well, let us know in the comments and hit the thumbs up button to cheer Dweezil on. Thanks again for watching Happy Garage, where we're always working on something. Bye now.